Okay, hello, hello everyone. I'm happy uh, to see so many people coming for my presentation. So, uh, okay, let's come back to the first slide. <laughs> uh, okay, so as you can see, uh, I'm a software engineer uh, in TomTom, and if you checked the agenda like a week or two ago, you could probably see another name here. Uh, because Jose Rojas was going to tell you about those APIs and electric vehicles. But I would say unfortunately, but not really, because I think you're in luck, as I'm a person who was writing, physically writing uh, some of those APIs. So maybe I can tell you something more interesting. And I will give you my view on how to use APIs for tracking, for that kind of stuff, uh, taking it into view electromobility. So, I don't know if you remember TomTom. Tom. So, basically, in the 90s, we were making PMDs, uh, but you know, no one uses PMDs anymore because you have everything in your phone, you have everything uh, in your car. So, we have to move, and we have 28 years of experience. So, we moved and created those online API. And, you know, first for those big cats, big companies, and now they're available to everyone. So, all of that stuff is available to you. And so, uh, what I would like to tell you is we'll go through APIs and I tell you how I see, what, what pitfalls I see, and uh, maybe how to circum, uh, circle around them using APIs. They don't have to be our APIs, but you have to know that electromobility is not exactly the same thing as we know today. So we go through maps, traffic, and the biggest part, search and routing. So these APIs are stateless. Uh, this one, geofencing, that's my love child, the newest, uh, newest edition, and uh, that one is stateful. And all of that, if you don't like using REST, you can just use uh, Android, iOS, or Web SDK, because they're, they're very nice. So we're using Web SDK as a part of our online demos uh, inside the company. Uh, okay, so just, just to tell, it's not exactly free. So there is two and a half thousand free calls per day if you create an account. So keep in mind that if you like to take our APIs, then that's the limit, but you don't really have to. So that is what we will see if you come to developer portal and the interesting stuff. So we need to have some user, um, so some UI. So uh, maps, that's, that's just the basic stuff. So I won't talk much about that. Uh, usually all, either take tiles or just uh, add some container and put map in it, and that's all. So we need some basic stuff to show uh, the road. We need to show the accidents, traffic incidents, and stuff. Uh, and if you use vector tiles instead of raster tiles, you can use map styler to make it look cooler, because you know this is our standard map color, but electric cars use mostly bluish colors, so you will probably like to change them. Uh, enough about that. <laughs> so traffic API. So now we're getting, we're getting to something. So I have a hybrid Toyota, and although it's not exactly an electric car, I really, really like to see where the traffic jams are. And I know everybody wants to avoid traffic jams, but if you're driving a hybrid car, you exceptionally want to, to, to check for those traffic jams because you're, losing, you're basically losing energy. You're using your electric motor, not, uh, not the petroleum one, and you have no chance to recuperate that energy. Because if you drive even a longer route, then you can recuperate energy from driving, from going down the hill, from your brakes, but if you're driving in a jam, even if it is the same road, you will not get as much uh, energy as you would normally get. So this is a nice addition. You can always put it as a layer on top of your map and then go with the heavy stuff, with the fun stuff. And the fun stuff is, if you have a fully electric car, you need to charge it. And you know, if you're driving with a petroleum car, it's fairly easy. I've Googled it and uh, first petroleum station was built in Germany in 1888, so a long, long time ago. And since then, uh, all those companies had time to create infrastructure. And normally, if you do any routing, you don't really care if there is a, mm, a station nearby, because there always is. And even if there isn't, you get those nifty signs saying, okay, the next station will be in 200 kilometers, so you better tank now, 
or you'll have to wait. So the infrastructure is great if you have a classic car, but if you have an electric car, mm, not so good. You don't have those signs. I would say I, I don't know how it looks here in Sweden, but in Poland it's even worse because uh, there are very few publicly uh, available uh, charging stations. Uh, normally they are free, of course, but they're available uh, near those shopping malls. So they're hidden in, in their parking lots and stuff. So it's not really obvious where they are. So you need to search for them. And well, you can search using uh, this kind of search API. I didn't even write uh, uh, that I need a charging station. I just wrote electric. And nearby Stockholm, there are some charging places. And maybe I'll tell you a story. So like three weeks ago, uh, I saw a Polish program. It's called Automaniac. And three guys are, telling, are talking about cars. And they made a challenge. So they wanted to go using only electric cars different types of electric cars from Oslo to the northernmost part of Norway. And they wanted to do it for free. So basically, they were only looking for free chargers. And the first car was the, the, the worst one, really, because it was a petroleum car that had its uh, uh, engine changed for an electric one. The second one was designed to be an electric car, so it had recuperation of energy and that kind of stuff. And the third one was a plug-in hybrid. So they could run on petroleum, but they can also charge it a bit. And the first issue they had, that every time, then because the first car had very small battery, they had to charge, well, quite often. And every time they googled, where is the nearest charging station? And they got some information, okay, there is a charging station. And well, you can get the same information from that search API, but that's not enough. You have to know more details. So. My friends created something like charging availability, where you get more information. And the foremost important information is the uh, plug-in type, so the charger type. Because uh, in Europe, we have the European plug, but Teslas are also very uh, popular, and they have an American plug. Uh, super different, so you cannot interchange them. And that was the first problem the guys had, because sometimes they choose a charging station that was for Teslas only. So they had to, um, you know, on those uh, remains of energy, they had to run down and find another charging station. If they checked what they were looking for, they would get to know that it's not the right one that they have chosen. So. Apart from that, you can have information because those charging stations send a lot of nice information to, to you. So you can know how many chargers are there in this charging station, uh, how many of them are occupied, how many of them are um, out of service, and they won't be available even if you, even if you need them, and how, how many of them are reserved for some reason. So every time you check it, you can know that, okay, so I can... Uh, charge my car, and those guys, there were three of them, so if they wanted to charge all of them at the same time, they would have to look for those that have free available, and that wasn't really easy for them, but, well, that's, I would say, that's the bread and butter, so that's very basic, and if you like, you can route from one charging station to another, and don't really care, but it's not efficient, uh, it's not comfortable, really, so maybe we should look for a kind of routing that incorporates that kind of information. And you know, routing isn't easy. This is Amsterdam. And as you can see in the straight line, uh, it's like 100, 150 meters maybe. But using a car, you cannot ride in that simple straight line. You have to go all around and come, come back here. So uh, that's the first issue. That even if you know how to go somewhere, you have to take into consideration the road and if you're driving electric, you have to know that maybe you will need to charge during, during that old long road. Uh, the other thing about Amsterdam, there are places you cannot really ride uh, anything else apart from electric cars. So it's also good to know because probably traffic there will be a bit smaller. So you can use uh, something like routing from TomTom. So we have a calculate, so the name is awful. Calculate long distance electric vehicle route. Come on, so that's, that, 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 that's not going to sell, but somehow it's, it's on the developer portal, so, so apparently they sell that. And all you need to do, well, it's not all, it's, uh, it's a, a lot of work. You need to give some information about the engine, about efficiency for the given uh, speeds, uh, and of course, what is the maximum charge and minimum charges you want when you reach your destination and in the stops between. And then 
you can get information how how do you go to a certain place and it will be probably a completely different route that you would normally take if you had a petroleum car. So you can also enhance that and the thing you should always remember is the plugin type because it's not it's not mandatory here but uh, I cannot stress this <laughs> too much. I saw I saw that program, and it was awful that they were so many times getting not the right plug they had. And there's you can also add a traffic because of what I said in the beginning. So I have a hybrid, and I think those guys with electric cars also like to ride uh, smoothly and recuperate that energy as much as they can because well, charging or well, sitting next to your car and charging is not really fun. So you can do that, and if you're driving into the mountains, uh, you can also add the additional information uh, how good your engine is when going uphill and downhill. So we have the information about el roads elevation, so you don't have to think about that, and you can incorporate that stuff in, in your service. So then uh, I have maybe another story. So my boss, uh, who was a VP in TomTom, he decided to buy himself a Tesla car and he wanted to come to Poland, so we had uh, that company meeting in Zakopane, so uh, it's a city in the southernmost part of, of Poland with mountains and stuff, so uh, he, if he, I bet he used that one because there are so few charging stations in Poland that if he just went for it, he would, wouldn't probably come from Amsterdam to Zakopane, because it's a really long way. But not only he managed to do that, but he did it on, I think, only two charges in Poland. So it was very nice, and I, I think that that really proves that you, st you can use electric vehicles even in a country that is not really prepared so good to use them. And, well, that's, that's my love child. So basically it's a tool for creating tools. It's geofencing. Uh, you can call it a uh, Pokemon Go API, if you like, because you can basically create Pokemon Go using that one. So, and when I tell you that it's a tool for creating tools, I mean that you can add something that you're missing from maps that you already have. So you can create areas, and then uh, giving a point somewhere in the geography, you can get information in which areas you are, what is the nearest point of that area that you're in uh, to you, and of course, the areas that, are, that you are not in, but they are near you. And you can, of course, say, what is the range? And using that information, you can, you can use that information in many different ways. So if you have an electric car, uh, like Tesla. So, OK, I'm, I'm telling you about Tesla, but really, who doesn't like the, 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 those, those guys, Elon Musk and his ideas? So you can fetch your car uh, using an app. But as you saw previously in, I don't know, two weeks ago, they had some issues. They still have some issues that there are places where they don't drive as well. So maybe you can create a fence in those places and say, and they, when your car is parked somewhere in that place, you should ask if your driver really wants to, you to, to come to, to him because it might be uh, not the best idea. So when, when the when car gets the information, it checks, oh, I'm, I'm in the no-go area, so I'll better send a confirmation to, 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 to my driver. So that's one use. You can also use it to mark those uh, uh, ve electric vehicle places on the, that I know from Amsterdam, because maybe you would like to drive only in those places, and you, know, you, you would like to keep to areas where there is only electric traffic. And the third thing that comes into my mind are those roads that have wireless charging for, for electric cars. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there is one in Japan. So maybe you want to keep to those roads and you will need that information because it's not common in the maps. Uh, I'm not sure if we have that. Uh, it, so if you need to add something to your map, you can do this. That, that's why this is a tool for creating tools. And there is an extension. Uh, we've launched that two weeks ago. Uh, there is something we call Location API, so basically that's tracking. So if you, uh, if you give us permission that you want to store your data, you can track uh, wherever your uh, car is. But you know, that's quite boring. So uh, if you give us another permission that you want to uh, mm, give all the data that was uh, 
in the location history to the geofencing, you can get additional information about entering and exiting uh, those fences that you've created and you get information about uh, your past whereabouts. So it gives you some more space to you know, look back at how you drove, uh, what could be, be done better, uh, maybe you shouldn't drive so fast on this wireless charging road, maybe you would charge better if you ride uh, a bit slower. So all of that you can calculate from information you gather and from those geofencing stuff. So that's still, the, that's still expanding, so if you like, uh, please try it and give us feedback because we're still very hungry for that. And well, that's, that's information for me because that's really my love child. Uh, and just to wrap stuff up, so I told you that we have SDKs. Uh, I was showing you examples mostly done by in JavaScript, uh, this stuff. So this is uh, Android and you can, you can write in Android SDK using Kotlin and Java and of course in uh, iOS, you can, you can write in uh, Swift or Objective-C. Uh, and although this, this is the end, so I really encourage you to, to check, if not our APIs, then any APIs that let you create some routes and traffic for electric vehicles. And well, once again, my name is Piotr Czech and I was very happy to give that talk to you. Thank you. <laughs>